Welcome back to the Trady Wife Life podcast. Now, I've had a major panic as I've pressed record this morning because over on the Tradies of Business podcast and in our, we have a private podcast for our Tradiepreneur members, I always have a silly mum joke that I share before the episode. And as I've pressed record this morning, I'm like, holy crap, I forgot my joke. I don't have it ready. It's too late. I've already pressed the button. But hello, we're on Trady Wife Life. We don't do silly jokes. Instead, we have incredible conversations with amazing women. And this morning, I am joined by Miss Amy Jones, who is now our longest serving client within the Tradepreneur program. Prior to that, we had a program called the Trade Desk. And prior to that, or no, after that, then we also had another program called the Drawing Board. So Amy's been with us right back from the very inception of Tradies and Business. And I've asked her to join me today to have a little bit of a chat around her journey within the program because I've got some very exciting news to share with you all. I've been alluding to this over on our Facebook page and in our Instagram stories. Um, There's a bit of a shift and a change coming to some of the areas or the offers we have within the Tradiepreneur program. I'll tell you about that at the end of today's episode, but for now, please welcome Miss Amy Jones. Hello, Amy. Amy, thanks for having me again. It's my pleasure. Amy has been on the Tradies and Business podcast, and then you were on the Ladies in Business podcast when it was the pre name of this. Um, so, Amy's an old hat and doesn't feel nervous at all today, do you, Amy? No, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Not as nervous as the first time, but yeah. I um, had an incident yesterday where you described it earlier today when we started talking off air. Um, you were saying how you hadn't felt nervous at all until this morning where you woke up this morning. Yet, as you know, yesterday I did a television interview with ABC uh, News around some issues in the construction industry, and I breezed into this one all the days before. I found out last Friday this was going to happen. I spent the whole weekend really excited. I'd done a, I've done a fair bit of TV, even live cross, which is really terrifying. And I was really, really chilled until 5 a.m. yesterday morning, and I woke up and I was absolutely petrified from the minute I woke up all the way through until mm, I think 3 a.m. this morning when I finally got off to sleep and had stopped questioning everything that I had said or done. And I think that's normal and and actually leads into a lot of the conversation that we're having today. Um, Our ladies chat this morning were chatting, or last night and again this morning, we're chatting about that imposter syndrome. And I know that's what I was feeling yesterday. I was doubting my own abilities, which is ridiculous. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, and anything I don't know what I'm talking about, I don't have to know. I'm not meant to know everything. And Amy, you and I have had some big conversations around that area as well. And um, I guess knowing our own boundaries and trying to find the strength to jump into some areas that might be a little bit scary for us. Do you want to share, I guess, a little around to where you felt imposter syndrome within your business and how that's impacted your journey along the way? Yeah, the... um big old imposter syndrome and it still like you said you still feel it now um I think it's one of those things that no matter how much work you do on it it's still going to be there and I've learned and had many conversations with you about the fact that it is still there it doesn't go away it's not less scary I just have to embrace it and go I I may not be okay now let's just do it and um I know from experience that I'll be okay on the other side. Yeah, uh, it, it is a conversation that I'm, I've had with you. I've had with Brendan uh, that fear of like looking like an idiot. The fear of oh my god, what if I make a fool of myself? And then I really sit and think like the people who matter the most aren't going to care. That you know they're not going to pick apart anything I say or do. They they're going to be there cheering me on like we all do for those that we love. And anybody who does want to pick anything apart, uh, I can it. <laughs> like, so I was sitting in in the same position, then their opinion doesn't matter. And I think it's being okay with that, um, which I'm, you're never really okay with, I don't think. But I think you can talk yourself around in that moment to just go, you know what, well, let's just be brave because bravery is being scared and doing it anyway. But I think with the... Um, Imposter syndrome in our business. I think it probably all started like back in the beginning. It was always our business. It was never, I never joined my husband's business. We started it together. But I always did feel like it was 
it was his domain. It's his trade. Um, I never wanted to step on his toes. I never wanted to get in the way or be that controlling wife who, you know, controls every aspect of everything, especially in his industry. So that was probably the biggest one for me was that imposter syndrome within the end of the marriage, like and within our partnership and the, that dynamic, that not wanting to railroad him or feeling, and I don't even know why I felt like that, but um, I, I really did. And it took a long time for me to sort of push past that and realise that we're here as a team. Everything else we do um, in our marriage and in our life we have our strengths and we both play to our strengths and we're totally okay with that. And I, I don't understand why it was different here. Um, and then it was his trade, but there's still within that area, there's still parts that I'm good at that he isn't and things that I could never do that he's incredible at. Um, and so it was navigating that barrier, I think, which was the hardest. And and once you sort of step into that a little bit, it, it did get a lot easier. And when you realise that the world isn't going to fall apart when when you do step in and do things, and then and there will be challenges. And so far we've survived 100% of those challenges and it's just about working through them. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Amy, for our listeners that haven't heard your backstory, can you tell us a little bit about your business and I guess maybe the structure changes you've had along the way? Because you did go into business together, which is quite rare. It doesn't happen as often. Usually we jump in and just help out. Nobody can see my air quotes when I'm doing air quotes. We just help out in the business, doing the books or whatever it looks like. And then that can turn into where we're comfortable, a much greater role within the business, a business that we're sharing together, where you guys actually did it differently right from the very beginning. It was your joint business. So I'd love to understand how your role has evolved but also for our listeners that haven't heard your story before, perhaps you could tell us about the business and what it is that you both do. Yes, yeah, so we have a, uh, a tree company, Touchwood Tree Services, and we're on in Newcastle, Lake Mac area of New South Wales. So we started just as a partnership, um, Brendan obviously on the tools, and we we started the year we got married and had our second baby. So it was a it was a really big big year. Um, so. I, at the start, I was just a stay-at-home mum who, you know, made some financial decisions with Brendan, and um, I did, you know, took all of the information to the accountant every quarter, that kind of stuff. Like, and I would literally just, I remember it was the night before Baz, and I would be sitting there, sort of, planning <laughs> all the mountains of um, receipts, and then get them off. That that was basically my role and making the decisions on advertising and that kind of stuff, and. I was hands off with everything else. So we started with just just the two of us and we would use um, subcontractors to get us by in the beginning. Um, yes, it was all Brendan. Like everything was in his head, he ran everything. He's so good at what he does, like so good. Um, and, yeah, I was just this, this stay-at-home mum who did all this other stuff. And I made, if people ask me what I did, I said I was a stay-at-home mum. Um mm-hmm. And then it did get to the point where sort of realising that in his trade, he can't do his job forever. And although we were comfortable, like when we came to you guys, we we weren't struggling financially, we were doing okay, but realising that we couldn't be there forever, that we had built the um, the foundations behind us to support us long-term if Brendan wasn't doing what Brendan was doing. Mm-hmm. So if he was sick then there's no money. There's you know, if, if he can't work anymore, there's no money. And that realisation in your 30s is really, it's a tough one to go, oh, shit, here I am thinking that we're doing really well, but what do we do? What do we do in another 10 years, another 20 years when he can't do what he does anymore? Mm-hmm. Um, and that was when I started to sort of really start listening to some podcasts and trying to um, better myself and my knowledge and trying to get Brendan on board a little bit with some of these things which yeah he was very old school he did everything the way his dad did it who sure did it how his boss did it but he you know everything was on papers there was it, we'd been in business for years and didn't have a database because everything's in a paper diary 
And that's terrifying to think now. Um, but yeah, so that was where we started with you. And um, I found the podcast and listened to that for a long time and then jumped in with the the trade desk and went, oh, you know, I'll just learn a few things and um, started stepping up a little bit there. I mean, when you first made that decision, was that a decision that was supported by Brendan? And when I say supported, I know you too well enough to know that you make agreements about the directions that you both take, whether individually or together as a business. And I guess I'm leading you to the real question here is, was that something that Brendan was actively involved in or was it something that you were doing yourself? I know that you just a moment ago identified that you were trying to improve yourself as a way to then help educate Brendan around how some of that business structure could change? Yeah, so he wasn't unsupportive, mm-hmm. but he was definitely me in the beginning doing the things. Um, and and it, it really did start with a, a bit of a battle where I would say, well, you need to do this and you need to do that and we need to change this. And he was set in his ways and not in, not in a bad way, but he was overwhelmed with everything that he was doing, like, having an entire business in your head is hard. Like I don't know how he did it for as long as he did. So it wasn't so much that he didn't want to do anything and he didn't want to get better, he didn't want to change it. It was that like he was literally in that space of there was no space for anything else for him to learn or change. So I was, you know, headbutting a brick wall for a while going, oh, you need to do this, and he wouldn't do it. And but why won't you do this? I've told you we have to do this. And um, then I'm like, oh, Maybe if I just do it, Mm. maybe if I just start, then maybe he might just follow. Um, And as you know, that is how everything started. Um, And yeah, I did start doing the little things and then I'd drop drop a little bit and and I'd just say, look, I'm just going to do this. I'll do this and see if that makes life easier. And it would. And he'd see that it made life easier. So then the next time I said, why don't we tweak this a little bit? He was like, yeah, yeah, okay. And then after a while, once he saw what happened when we changed things, all I'd have to say is, wasn't Nick said? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, okay. Like, yeah, the biggest one ever was when I said, Emily the phone. Uh, as you know, um, he did all the, all the phones and we went to him one day and just said, look, let's get you a new number and I'll answer the phone. And I expected a lot of pushback from that. However, we do, it just didn't come. He, he just went, okay. And I think at that point, it was because he had had that firsthand experience of me taking over stuff wasn't me taking over. It was me using his load, which once you change that mindset and that our men see that, that it's easing their load, not controlling or taking over, that made all the difference. And I think it made the difference for me as well. I didn't feel like I was doing it to take over. I felt like I was easing his load and sharing it between us and doing the things that I was good at and allowing him to do the things that he was good at. Systems and structure, I think, is is one of those things that are really hard to adapt and change your mindset around when you are in that state of overwhelm. And I think you've perfectly explained that with what it was like for Bren at that time. Our gents are very much in overwhelm. They are so busy trying to do the on the tools thing, manage the team, or manage the clients, or manage the family. Um, it's it's a huge, I don't want to say burden because it's almost the wrong word. And I'm sure at times it feels very much like a burden for them. Um, they're very overwhelmed. They find it hard to, I guess, see the wood for the trees. Pardon the pun. It is a good. <laughs> and but it is very hard for them to see that this system, this sales system, or this people management system or this, um, even answering the phone system could have a huge positive impact for them and free up some of that mental space so that they are able to then look at some of the other on the business changes that could be made to help them within with, within their business journey. I wonder, Amy, what kind of impact changing some of that structure and those systems had for your family life? Oh, where do you start? That's... Um... Yeah, the, he would get up. So at the worst, when, when things were, were really bad and overwhelming, he was getting up in the dark, like three, four o'clock in the morning to maintain equipment because there was no time to do it at any other time of the day. So he would go down to a park in the dark and sharpen chainsaws and do all that kind of stuff on his own. Then he'd start work. 
he'd work all day, he'd finish, and then he'd go and do the quotes in the afternoon because he's answering the phone. So then he's calling people back, doing quotes as the phone calls are coming in. So then on top of that, because he ca- he can't, then he doesn't have that time to plan. He would drive all like because crisscross all over the place doing quotes because there there wasn't that time for the planning. So what could have taken him an hour was taking three driving all over the place and then getting home at dinner time tired and cranky eating dinner it was stressful times as you know with the kids witching hour around that time there was no quality family time we didn't enjoy that time and then yeah he'd have a shower and he'd fall asleep because he was so tired and he'd start it all over again the next day um to change from that to get to a point where we had the processes in place for team to do those things, for team to be maintaining the equipment while he's quoting in the afternoon, just just that little that little thing of go, getting up in a normal time and going to work instead of at three o'clock. Um, yeah, that's how much of a difference it was at the start. Mm-hmm. Um, to now being able to have time off and and the business still run. There's been a couple of really big life changes. This is really, this is probably the easiest podcast for me because I know so much about you guys and your family and your business structure, having worked with you for so long. And I was reflecting as you were talking back at the beginning about some of those huge shifts you guys have had in the last, um, I think it's three years now. Um, One is around how hard you guys worked with that structure to drive the profit so you could purchase your first home. I, I, I had a real spine tingling moment when I remembered how excited you guys were about it, buying your home that you now love and the kids love and has really changed up your lifestyle. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And then um, you also purchased a brand new vehicle. Was it last year or about 18 months ago? It's not that long yeah. ago. Yeah. Through and, and that's solely, so you are a one income family. Your business drives the income for your family and you've been able to do all of this within your company and a lot of this Amy you've been behind um, making the changes so that the profitability has been there so if you could tell us about you know those big moments and then perhaps a little about what sort of changes you were able to create to ensure that profitability yeah so they they were huge ones like the last three to four years has just been massive for us Uh, I remember when we first came on with you guys like in, in the drawing board I think our like our first year, our turnover was like doubled. I think from the the year before. So we um, we paid off. We had a, a finance on a truck, a chipper, and my car, and we paid all of those off like two to three years ahead of schedule, and then saved our house deposit, um, which I had allowed like seven years to get all this done, and I think we did it in three to four. Um, and bought a house in a dream location where yeah, our kids are going to have the lifestyle that we had as kids. And um, yeah, that was all just through little, little changes. And I think once those little changes start to snowball, it has a huge effect. And it probably started, I read The Barefoot Investor. Um, I'm at, I've got a lot of books that I've read that have, have been a turning point for me. And the barefoot investor was one of those ones where you're just like, oh, wow, I can actually do it. Because when I look at the big picture, it's like, how do you ever get there? How do we get from here to there? There is no road. Um, And so the barefoot investor was one of those books where you're like, oh, you can, you can do it. And Brendan went, yeah, right. right, Yeah. If you say so, I'll try it, but it's not going to happen. But yeah, we did. We started with the little bits. And then once you see the positive effect, you're just like, Oh wow! If that's how I much better I can do, what else can I do? And so then that just you know we got on that roll and just went, we're doing this, and then that flows into the business as well because as you said, it, it is our only income. Our our business has been our only source of income since we started it in two thousand eleven. Um, so as a family, like that's always been something that I've been really proud of that our business can support our family um, as our only income. So then to try and find ways to either make extra money in the business or to save money in the business to then contribute to all the personal stuff that we want to do as well. So 
yeah, it, there's been lots of little processes, lots of little changes and mindset shifts. Mm, hugely. You guys are, um, have come ahead in leaps and bounds and I don't want to downplay the work that you did before you even came on. I know that for you, even jumping into the trade desk and then the drawing board, they were, they were huge decisions for you guys to make. Um, and that that required, if I can share it, I won't share the details, you, that you have shared with me that you had to do quite a bit of work to be comfortable enough to be able to jump in and, and start to drive some of these changes within your business. I wanted to talk about change and um, you're doing all my hard work for me today. Thank you, Amy Jones. <laughs> Talking about little changes and I feel as though when people look at any kind of coaching program or education program, we make assumptions about how big the shifts need to be to get the results we're looking for. And yet what we see is the clients that are consistently making small changes have the biggest overall impact within their business. We've got some clients that come in and make huge change immediately. And of course, they have fantastic um, d- different outcomes that they're looking for. However, the ones that are that are just working away at making the little tiny changes get to that same significant outcome uh, in almost the same amount of time because there's a bit of a lag effect, I suppose, with any change that we make. Nothing creates an immediate outcome. So perhaps we utilize an example that's very familiar to most of us women, losing weight. Um, the changes we make to our diet start to work immediately, but we don't see the outcome from them for a period of time. For some, it's quicker than others. Same way in your business. So small shifts that you're changing, you know, like taking the phone, like um, measuring your leads and understanding where they're coming from, like uh, working around your marketing or understanding who your your ideal client is or putting in some people structure that we worked really hard on with you guys in the early days to ensure that Bren was able to step away, allow the guys to, you know, we're talking about some pretty dangerous machinery that they're working on. Um, ensuring their safety, like all of those little tiny baby steps that we were taking. All the while, let's not ignore the fact that you've got three kids. Right up until this year, um, you've had at least one of the kids at home. You've now got, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, one is in high school and two in primary school. Um, so you you have a very busy family life as well, which I think is very typical for most of us trady wives. Um, you're dealing with that. You're dealing with personal life which always gets in the way, unfortunately. Um, You're trying to run a business as a couple, which can be really challenging. And of course, it's just the little tiny steps that are getting you to where you want to be. So I'd really like, Amy, if you can share around, I guess, the impact for you of the little tiny steps that you've had. Yeah, so honestly, it really does come down to those little tiny steps. Like when we signed up and you're thinking, oh my God, do I have to do like this intense program where better 10x the business in 10 weeks? doesn't get you anywhere oh. it is the little things like hey honey do you want to run a google calendar for a little while and see if that way <laughs> you know, it's those little changes like the paper diary and that one was a hard one brendan didn't want to give it up because that was all he knew and so we're like right here well, why don't we run both we'll run both so you've still got your full back so that you can feel comfortable we can test the waters by that stage we'd made enough little changes that he just went look if i'm going to do it i'll do it and we can always go back if it doesn't work. So he jumped straight on Google Calendar. I mean, that in itself, I didn't know where he was at any point in time. But like, if somebody called and needed him, if he didn't answer his phone, I wouldn't know what suburb he was in. I, there was none of that. Whereas then just having that Google Calendar, knowing where he was and when I could, like, when I could book appointments in and know that he was going to be at home with the kids, like, that's the kind of little changes that have made such a huge impact on our overall life. Um, so yeah, it was the things like the, the Google Calendar. And then we ended up switching to ServiceMate. We got the job management software. And the um, I think our, our biggest one would be our sales process. Mm-hmm. That, that, that was a lot of little changes that equaled one. I mean, that took me five months to to do and even now it's still always evolving um but yeah it, it is it's all those really tiny things that that have made the biggest impact um over the in the um processes like you sit there and think about oh you know we need systems and processes in the business and 
I'm pretty confident in saying that everybody gets overwhelmed when they start thinking about that. Everyone, you, you expect that you're just going to go from this running a business in your head to having a McDonald's kind of systems in place. And that's not what it is. It's literally like writing down the same information every time somebody falls. Yeah. It's those little, that's what systems are. And that was scary in the beginning thinking, you know, we've got to have all these systems and how am I going to do that? But not realizing that the systems are literally, okay, so when the phone rings, this is the information you need to collect. It's, yeah, yeah, they're systems. Yeah, we've already got the systems. I think this is the thing. There are lots of other business coaches out there advertising that systems are the holy grail and they really are. I can't argue with that. I think where the messaging gets lost is, I guess, the misunderstanding that you have to put systems in your business when the truth is you already have the systems in your business. And what we're responsible for as coaches is helping you to adapt those systems to a repeatable way that give you the results that you want. And so for some of our clients, that looks like changing the system completely. For others, it looks like adding in an extra couple of steps. And for some, it looks like taking a few steps away. This is not about creating everything from scratch. It's about working with what you already have in place and then fleshing it out to get you that repeatable outcome. That's what business should be, something that's repeatable towards the outcome that you're looking for. Amy, um, Brendan, was he ever resistant to any of these changes that you brought to the table? He, he was. Um, he didn't want to be. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't just trying to be difficult. But he, like all of us, like, yeah, you know, somebody comes here and says to me, oh, why don't you clean your house this way instead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that that would be a dangerous conversation. Um, but no, that he was very, this is just how I've always done it. And not, as I said before, having that capacity to then come up with the new ways and, and the thought process, it was, it was a lot. So... We're so ingrained to just go, no, this is my way and shut down and not listen. And like he was like that in the beginning where he was like, you know, it's not going to work. Um, I think over time we've both learned to communicate better. We've both we've both softened a lot and sort of see the other person and their perspective a lot now. So I changed the way I come to him with things. Um, and <laughs> like, so something that otherwise, well, you know, once you've mastered that, <laughs> things things are so much easier. Uh, yeah, he he was he was resistant because he just saw a lot of the stuff as being too hard, been too much work. Um, and then I think in you know, a lot of that, me just stepping in and doing the thing, then you know, took that off his plate. So if it was something that he didn't have to think about, if I could do it and get the ball rolling, and then he could see the impact then he would jump in. So, yeah, there was a little resistance, but not, you know, he, he was happy with the egg. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And what does it look like now, Amy? This is a leading question because, again, of course, I know what it looks like now, but what does it look like in terms of his participation and his support for what you are, quite frankly, still driving within your business? Um, how has that changed for Brendan? Oh, look, he knows that it works now. He uh, – and – even with things that are definite, he knows it's still worth a try. That, you know, what's the worst that can happen with anything is it doesn't work and we go back to the way we did it before. But now he's very much, yes, dear. <laughs> what, what are we doing? And um, it, it's nice actually listening to him talk to the boys at work and him telling the boys why we're doing something different. Whereas before it would have been me trying to convince him that we have to do this and him putting out all the blocks, whereas now I'll sit there and go, look, we have to do this differently, whatever it may be, and then to hear him then explain to the boys, look, what we're doing isn't working, so we need to change this or we're going to add this, and then him explaining the why to the staff, like that, that is really nice to to see that difference from in the beginning of, no, that's not going to work, to, yeah, okay, if, if you say that we should try this, let's give it a try. And then, again, passing it down the line to, to the other people who need to be on board as well. I think one of the most exciting uh, shifts for me too is seeing him actively participate. So 
uh, in the beginning, it was a bit scary. And Bren's never backwards about coming forwards and saying g'day and, and, you know, letting his thoughts be known, which I really admire. Uh, and now we see a whole bunch more of Bren than we've ever seen before because he's become quite confident, I think, in the changes that you've been working through and the outcomes that they're delivering. Amy, I don't, um, I was nearly going to close there, but I, I think it would be remiss of me not to mention there was a period of time uh, where you had to jump in and run your business solo. And I wonder if there's just a bit of that journey that you'd be comfortable to share. Yeah. So uh, there was a while where Brendan wasn't doing really well um, and needed to have a bit of a break from the business, from work at the end. Just a complete overwhelm. Uh, it was not long after we'd bought, <laughs> we'd bought our house and, and all of this stuff. And it was quite scary for me because, like, our income has always been him earning the income. Uh, just like most trade businesses out there, if the trade is not at work, there's no money coming in because mm-hmm. most of us have created those businesses for that they need to be there. And so that was really scary to just sort of go, well, at the moment, our family needs for Brendan to have some time off. Um, that means you know, going through the bank accounts and going, well, can we can we afford it? And having it, we were so fortunate to have you and Watts um, to have a chat with you guys and go like, you know, at the end of the day, our family and everybody's health is the most important thing. And if that means we've got to have some time off, then so be it. How do we make sure that we've still got a business to come back to at the end of it was how oh, we went in thinking about it. After having a chat with you guys um, and you're giving me the confidence, we went, oh, let's just have a crack. Yeah. So, yeah, I stepped in and and took on that role of running the business so that Brendan could have the time off and we hired a, a subcontractor to come in and, and do what Brendan does. Um it was terrifying. We we had a couple of weeks to get that sorted, um, to get some processes in place because we'd never employed Vinod before to do the main part. We've only ever employed the laborers. So finding somebody in a short space of time, being able to then train them, not so much in their job, but how to do it in our business. And um, yeah, it, it was really scary to to sort of think about that and wonder whether I could do it, wonder whether I was going to completely ruin everything that we'd worked so hard for. But then at the same time, like I built up a fair bit of confidence working with you guys over the the last few years to go, well, you know what, I probably can have a crack. And even if we can just keep the business ticking over, that was our goal at the start. It wasn't even to make money. It was just so that, People were still getting the the calls were being answered, and there was still a little bit of work being done, so that we didn't have to then start from scratch again. So yeah, I did that for a month for Brenton to have some time off, and managed to run a trade business without knowing anything at all about a trade, um, which yeah was really scary, but it was really rewarding at the end to know that. Yeah, that that imposter syndrome of I'm I'm just a stay at home mum, I'm just this, but I wasn't. I I ran a trade business alone for a month, um, and I did that on two separate occasions. I think the second time um, was much easier because I I knew that I'd done it before. I knew that I had you guys holding my hand in the background because um, yeah, I'm. Definitely somebody who needs to be pushed off the cliff at times, <laughs> knowing that that you guys are there to catch me every time. Um, but yeah, it worked. It it worked really well. There was challenges. There were so many challenges, but it's nothing that you know. If we worked for other companies, we would just be confident in our role. And if we was you know asked to take on a bit extra. You do it knowing that you haven't done it before. I'm going to do it, do my best. It might not be enough, but it's my best. And I think you know having the confidence to do that in your own business is it's hard, but it's so rewarding when you do do it. And I want to make the note that your business didn't just survive; it thrived through that time. Um, 
And then it thrived after, I think, because of the hard work that you put into that so that when Bren was able to come back, the business just continued to grow and thrive. It was absolutely incredible. And my hat is off to you, Amy Jones. You continually stand up to being pushed off the cliff uh, and you work through the hard times and you're constantly delivering results, not just for you, but for your entire family through making some of those small changes. Ladies, uh, I'm going to share with you, we do have um, something different coming. So there's a, you're going to see a bunch of stuff from us over the next month or so. There are two big changes coming to Tradies and Business. Um, there's a new service that we're adding. I'm not going to talk about that today, but if you're in a business that requires a bit of extra support in terms of administration support, um, please head on over to our website, tradiesandbusiness.com.au. There's a new service offering there for you. And what I will share with you today, though, is off the back of stories like Amy's, and we have a bunch of other members that you're going to be hearing from in the next couple of weeks, we have made the giant leap to create a ladies-only program. So this is a business coaching, education, mentoring program for the tradie wives or the tradie wife figure in business. Um, it is a, a, a six-month long commitment. So you've got six months to work through some of these key systems in creating the little changes that lead to a bigger change outcome. Uh, and we will be releasing that. That's going to be going live at the end of October. But before we do that, we have something super exciting. We're going to have a launch week. So in our launch week, we will be having a daily webinar for four of the day. So it's your opportunity to come and join myself and some of our Tradepreneur ladies to learn. I've got the titles here for you. I can tell you all about what you're going to learn during this time. We're going to learn about why you don't need to be a tradie to run a trade business. Amy Jones will agree with that every day of the week. Uh, we're going to be talking about the five systems that every trade business needs. None of this needs to be scary and all stuff that we can do as the tradie wife. Uh, we're going to talk about why you, that's you, the tradie wife, are the secret to your business success. And then the final topic is why a community is key to fast tracking the business freedom that you're looking for. So we're going to have a fantastic week with a bunch of webinars so that you'll have your daily opportunity to come and listen in and get involved and learn about what it looks like to run a trade business, what it looks like to start to work within creating the systems and the structure. Perhaps we'll talk a little bit about those resistances that we might face um, as we're stepping in. And the idea here is that you get lots of opportunity to learn. If you're interested, you might like to come and join us in the Tradepreneur Ladies Only program um, over the next week or two, you'll start to see a bunch more information about that coming out. Amy Jones, thank you very much for joining me today. It's always a pleasure to share your story and to really just sit and thoroughly reflect on the amazingness that has been your journey over the last few years. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jen. It's always a pleasure. I think we need a part four yet, so hang on tight. <laughs> no, why not? Why not? But can I just say, those, um, those webinars sound really good like they're all of the things that the topics that I would say are important like the community and you know not not needing to be a tradie to run a trade business like they're they're the things that need to be spoken about I think. Honey you should say that Amy as we press the end to the record button I'm going to be talking to you about how many of those I'd like you to participate in with me. <laughs> <laughs> so listeners if you've enjoyed Amy's story and you'd like to check out more of Amy make sure that you follow along um, and keep yourself educated on that launch week and your opportunity to join us for those webinars. Thank you for listening.